Welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech 24, France 24's tech show. Now, ever thought about going on vacation in space? Well, your dream may come true in just a couple of months. This says dozen of space travel ventures are launching. However, whether it's aboard a spacecraft or even a balloon, they all come at a hefty price. And in Test 24, we'll showcase the French startup Bioenzymatic Fuel Cells, which is making electricity with paper and enzymes. But first, a video game in Iraq has an entire generation hooked. The mobile version of the game Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, or PUBG, has become so popular in Iraq that the country's youth has been dubbed the PUBG generation. Iraqis across the country are spending hours every day on the game's virtual battlegrounds, socializing via its live chat, playing competitively, or even falling in love. James Vecina has the story. Battling it out in the living room, it's a virtual war that can go on for hours. Helmets and his friends are crazy about PUBG, an online multiplayer game that's all the rage among young Iraqis. I began playing several years ago, but getting access to internet isn't as easy as in other countries. The teams we compete against have a much better connection. While 4G is slowly being rolled out, Many homes in Iraq only have electricity for a few hours a day. Half of the country's 39 million strong population has a mobile phone, and three quarters of them use it to connect to the internet. So for Haida Jaffa, it's a no brainer. The market potential for mobile phone games is huge. Ten years ago, he considered setting up an esports federation for the country. Today, thanks to a change in mentalities, He's now at the head of it. When we'd go to the Minister of Sports and tell them about eSports, they didn't get it. But after they saw so many people gaming on their phones, they started to take it seriously. And when they saw the number of subscribers on YouTube and the millions of views, they realized it was worth investing in. In a country that's been torn apart by conflicts for decades, this appetite for warlike video games can sometimes be frowned upon. For some, it incites violence. And two years ago, lawmakers tried to have it banned. But their mission failed. Now 2021 looks to be the first year that commercial tourists travel to space. A childhood dream come true for some and a scientific and commercial miracle for others. Either way, it's a lucrative business. The space travel industry is expected to reach $8 billion by 2030. Well, for more on this, let's turn to our in-house expert, Peter O'Brien. Hello, Peter. Hello, Julia. Let's start by talking about Jeff Bezos. He's set to become the first space tourism uh, guinea pig, if you will, with his brother Mark as he embark uh, Blue Origins New Shepard on July 20th. Yes, that's right. A little right. less than a month from yeah. now. Yeah, and New Shepard is going to blast off vertically. It's going to ascend to around 75 kilometers in altitude above Earth, at which point it will separate the rocket from the capsule. The capsule will continue to about the 100 kilometer altitude mark, which is called the Kármán line. It's this fairly arbitrarily designated line which separates the Earth's atmosphere from outer space. So then Jeff and his uh, brother will be up there floating for around three minutes and be they'll be able to see the curvature of the Earth. The rocket, meanwhile, will be sailing back down to Earth where it will position itself vertically on its landing pad, after which the pod will come back to Earth, use retro thrusters to slow itself down and three big parachutes as well. The hatch will open, out will come um, Jeff and his brother Mark in the desert. Um, unknown at this point whether Jeff will come out wearing his... Uh, famous sunglasses and cowboy hats. We'll have to wait and see. Now, uh, Jeff, of course, and Mark are not the only ones who are sending people or who are trying to send people in outer space, are they? Yeah, of course, Elon Musk is, has organized a trip as well. His company, SpaceX, wants to send humans to Mars by 2025. Um, but this September, they've got a mission called Inspiration4, which will be the first to orbit Earth with only private citizens, two men and two women. They'll reach about 540 kilometers in altitude and the mission will last 
three days. Richard Branson, of course, is still planning well. his passenger flights with Virgin Galactic, says they're coming soon. Um, last but not least, least, though, there's Axiom Space, which, is founded, co which was co-founded by Michael Sufredini. He was formerly NASA's International Space Station project manager. He's developing the world's first commercial space station, including very comfy quarters uh, with large windows for space tourists. Well, as Comfy as you can get in weightlessness, I suppose. All right, Peter, all of this sounds fantastic. I'm in. I want to go. How much is a ticket to space? You're going to have to break the piggy bank, uh, Julia, because okay. because it will be about $200,000 to $250,000 for a seat on the first Virgin Galactic flights, which will start from 2022. And a rich bidder who's as yet unidentified has spent $28 million for a ticket aboard the new Shepard. At least, though, the money from this auction will go to Blue Origins Charity, which is called Club for the Future, and that encourages young people to pursue a career in science and space. Thank you very much, Peter O'Brien there. Now, before you leave on your space vacation, you probably need to undergo some sort of training. Well, a French-born U.S. incorporated company is preparing people for such spatial expeditions. Well, let's buckle up and cross over to the co-founder and executive chairman of Orbit, Nico Dagum. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Hello, Julia. Very nice to be here. So you've co-created the company Orbit, which will offer training sessions to prepare civilians for a stay in space. How long will each course last and what kind of physical training will people follow? So you have a variety of uh, space experience, so orbital flight for a few minutes in space, down to orbital stay where you have multiple weeks. So obviously, uh, suborbital requires uh, a few days and weeks of preparation, whereas uh, longer stay requires months uh, and sometimes years. Uh, and really what is special about Orbit is that we're trying to find the right balance between an amazing technical deep training as much as an amazing hospitality luxurious experience. And that's the balance of all that makes us so unique. Now, specifically, you also work on those topics like meditation or how to eat on board the space vessel. But Orbit is indeed also a school almost to improve people's well-being, isn't it? Yes. I mean, most of the training that exists today is done for professional astronauts. It's extremely rigorous, but very uh, military in a way. So we felt it was important to consider the space travel holistically and look at the way you're going to live the experience, how you're going to change your point of view on Earth, on yourself. So to us, it's it's very uh, important uh, part of the program to help you uh, mentally and spiritually too. Now, do these courses end in a certificate that is perhaps accepted by other companies such as Blue Origin, SpaceX, or even uh, Virgin Galactic? Well, it's really the year one of, of space, commercial space uh, exploration. So we really are on the forefront of uh, preparation. We will uh, issue certificate, give uh, grades, and certainly we expect this to be a, a standard for the industry. Uh, but it's very much today uh, a, a, an industry in the making. So our rigor and our professionalism hopefully uh, will give uh, uh, the other industry players a, a great connection and certainly a great point of reference. And it is our intent to be uh, at the forefront of this preparation. Well, Nico Dagum, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to speak to us today. Merci beaucoup. And we're going to move on now to Test24. This week on the set of Test24, we're showcasing a French startup from Grenoble. It's called BFC. It stands for Bioenzymatic Fuel Cells. And this has the potential to be truly revolutionary because it's generating electricity simply using paper and enzymes, Peter. That's right, Julia. It may not look like very much, but this small, thin device made almost entirely of paper um, is actually a bio battery, which means it can generate electricity using just the enzymes in its paper, transforming oxygen from the air and sugars, both natural substances, of course, into electricity. It's entirely um, biodegradable and doesn't use any metal or polluting fuel to create this energy. Uh, so to charge it, all you need is just a drop of liquid, any liquid with glucose in it. So that could be sugar water or it could be a bodily fluid like blood or sweat. Um, now, of course, it's not meant for large objects like household appliances or cars um, because it doesn't last an awfully long time and um, it only pr produces a few milliwatts of power per square centimetre. But it's great for disposable electronics, replacing that lithium button battery that we so often use and is toxic. 
it's non-disposable, so we want to replace that and use something like this instead. For low-power devices like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, it's perfect as well. For logistics, you can stick it on any package and use it for tracking. And for medical devices, it's great as well. It's been tested as a, um, as a, in a pregnancy test, and it's been proven to work. Um, at the moment, it's still in its testing phase, but BFC have got funding, and they're hoping to roll out hundreds of thousands of these by the end of next year. Great news. Thank you very much for that, Peter. It brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed it, and you can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you soon.